Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. I thought I'd explain the opening a little bit before we get into today's topic. As you might have guessed, I'm going to be changing the channel name. Ham Cured Smoke is kind of cute, but it's also kind of corny. And I think that for people who are not English speakers as their first language, the play on words gets a little bit lost. Ham Radio, A to Z, which will be the new name of the channel, has a little bit more connection to the type of videos that I'm doing and hopefully makes a little more sense and maybe it'll be a little more easy for people to find. So that's what's going to be happening. I haven't actually changed the channel name yet. I'll be doing that Within the next couple of videos, I'll probably be running this same opening for the next couple of videos just to let people know that it's coming up. If you've subscribed to the channel first, thank you. And to let you know, your subscription should not change. You won't have to resubscribe or do anything like that. So anybody who's already subscribed, uh, you're fine. You won't have to worry about it. And it's just going to be a new name going forward. So that's all I wanted to say about it. Now, let's get into today's topic. Yeah, I had mine working good, and then I had to reset the radio and trying to get everything back lined up. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but uh, the GPS is usually something I try to get to right up front, but uh, which menu option you have chosen at the Well, moment? there's a little bit of conversation going on on D-Star. This is through my hotspot. I don't happen to have a D-Star repeater nearby. So any long-distance D-Star that I do is going to be through my hotspot. I've had some inquiries about D-Star, and it's about time we start covering that for the 705. I think a lot of people find D-Star a little bit intimidating and find it a little bit complex. And it certainly can be when you start doing communications over gateways and through reflectors and over the Internet. But it actually starts out quite simple, and we're going to look today at some of the basics that you need to do just to have a digital voice conversation on the IC705. So let's get started. In order to use D-Star, the first thing that you have to have done is your call sign, or what's called my call sign, has to be set correctly in the radio. To do that, we're going to press the menu button. We're going to go to the set screens. And it's on the first page where uh, the third one down, my station. We're going to touch that. And you can see I've got my call sign already set to WA2IVD. And you'll see there's a slash 705. When you set your call sign, you put your call letters in, you can just put that, but optionally, after the slash, you can have a total of four characters, including the slash, and that can be anything you want. So I have it set to the radio number, a lot of people do that, you know, you might set it to ID 51 or 7100, I'm sorry, you can have four characters after the slash total. And to identify the radio you want, or you might say slash NY or PA or something like that to identify your state, it can be anything you want. You'll also notice here that I've got my call sign in slot one, and there's two, three, four, and if we scroll down, there's five and six. So there is room here to put up to six call signs in the radio. The reasons you might do this is if you had two or three people sharing the same radio, you can put the call signs for each person in here and then select the appropriate one depending on who's operating the radio. For example, my wife is N2LZN, so if I touch and hold my call sign, oops, sorry, if I touch and hold the blank one here, you get edit and clear. Clear would clear out anything that was already in there. So I'm going to hit edit, and then I'm going to put my wife's call sign in here and press enter. And for now, I'm not going to put anything after the slash. We'll just leave it as her call sign. And then you could have a club call sign, or if perhaps you have a call sign from a different country, if you operate in different countries sometimes, you could put that 
anything you need, but uh, you have room for up to six call signs. So now when we go back to my call sign, you'll see my wife's call sign is in there. The other way that you can tell what call sign is in here, and I'm going to back out or which one is currently selected, is when you first power on the radio. So let me power this up. You'll see the call sign comes up. So my wife's call sign came up on the bottom of the screen on power up. Otherwise, if you're going to operate digital voice, the only real quick way to check that is to go into the set screen and see which one is currently selected. So for now, I'm going to select my own call sign. Then the next option that you have here is transmit message. And this is a message that the radio will send every time you key it. And anybody else on a D-Star radio will see that message text show up. So I have Tom Spring Hill, which is where I'm located. You can just turn it off and then there will be no transmit message sent. And then similar to the call signs, you can program multiple ones. Now, there's only five transmit messages. There were six call signs. I'm not really sure why they didn't make those two numbers equal. But again, just like with the call sign, you can um, touch and hold the number and then edit it. And the, you have 20 characters for the message. So any 20 characters you want is what will fit in the memory. And again, that can be your name, location, whatever makes sense for you. And that's really all there is to programming your call sign and the optional transmit message. I've got 145.67 programmed in as my frequency. This is a standard D-Star simplex frequency. So this is kind of like the equivalent of the 146.52 for D-Star. And I've got my radio set to DV or digital voice, which pops up in the modes here. So I've just selected DV. And you'll notice there's a little arrow there also. And that's because the 705 is equipped with a built-in GPS and you can have it automatically transmit GPS coordinates. So your choices are off DPRS, which is basically digital packet reporting system. It's the D-Star equivalent of APRS or NMEA. We're not going to worry about NMEA for now, but I've got my DPRS turned on. And what that means is whenever I key the microphone and transmit, the radio is going to transmit my position as background data in addition to transmitting my voice audio. So then the one other thing we need to set to have a conversation is the call sign for outgoing. So we're going to press menu and it's the CS option here, which is call sign. And you've got four choices. The bottom one is my call sign, which we've already set up. Then uh, the top choice is UR, which is the call sign of the person or repeater or whatever that you're trying to communicate with. And you'll see in here it's got CQ, CQ, CQ. That is the default setting for that. And as long as you have that set in here, it says you're calling anybody. So it's you're not directing your transmission to any specific repeater or call sign. And then we've got R1 and R2, and these are for repeater call signs. And this is if you're communicating with a local repeater, and then the R2 is if you're trying to go through a gateway to a remote repeater from the local repeater. We're not going to worry about those right now. We're going to just do simplex for today and just look at the basics of doing a radio to radio D star call. So I've got CQ, CQ, CQ set in there and then just dashes for the repeaters. So that's all we need for right now. So let me go back out of there and then I'm going to have my friend Howard who lives not too far away from me get on his D-Star radio, and we're going to try to make a contact here. So let's see if we can get that set up.
N0AZ, N0AZ from WA2IVD on 67 Simplex. WA2IVD, this is N0AZ, uh, getting you 5-9 uh, uh, here uh, at the shack, uh, coming in crystal clear. Okay, thanks, Howard, and uh, getting you as well, and also got the uh, message display showing your uh, name and location as well as your call sign. I think if I put this up into the call history display, then I'll also see where you are, that you're 10.9 or 10.8 miles from me, and you're using your 9700. Uh, yep, I've got mine on, on that display, and it's showing me as um, 11 miles or so uh, from me. And, uh, uh, yeah, it all seems to be working uh, perfectly from this end. Okay, very good. We'll, uh, we'll demonstrate the, the call sign squelch. So next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hit function and i'm going to turn on digital squelch which should make it so that i don't hear any audio unless somebody has my call sign so um let's see and then i'm going to have howard call me with it set to cq 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 for the ur so n0az yeah, if you could give me a call one more time, Howard, and I think you've got your UR call set to CQ, CQ, CQ. Yeah, so I saw your name and your display uh, came up that showed that you were calling, but uh, I got no audio at this end, which is what I would expect. So can you set your UR to my call sign and call me again? WA2IVD, this is N0AZ calling with uh, my ID set to, uh, to your call sign. Yeah, N zero A Z W A two I V D. Yep, I got audio that time. It actually even got a little alert alarm tone after uh, you called me. So one other test I'd like to do is: Can you set your U R back to C Q C Q C Q, but then go in and set your E M R that emergency function to on? Let's look at the emergency function setting and how you set that, and we'll look at how that works over the air. So you're going to press Menu. You're going to press Set. And again, on the first page at the bottom, we have the DV settings. So we're going to go there. We're going to skip by some of these other choices for the moment and go to the bottom of the menu pages. And we have EMR. This is Emergency. And the choices are on and off. It defaults to off. I'm going to turn it to on just to show. And then there's emergency audio frequency level. And the default is 50%. That's probably a good place to leave it. The way this function works is if you turn this on and then you transmit, Anybody who has a D-Star radio that is receiving your signal, even if they have their digital squelch turned on so they only hear people with their call sign, or if they have the coded squelch turned on, or if they have their volume turned down to zero or very low, when you transmit, their squelch will open if this emergency is on, and their volume level will automatically be set to 50%, or whatever you set this setting to. You can set it to 100%. I'm going to suggest you don't do that. 
50% is probably sufficient that most people would hear you. And obviously this is intended only for emergencies. So when this is turned on, any D-Star radio that hears your signal will open the squelch and turn the volume level on the radio to 50% in this case. So it's in an emergency situation if you really need to get a hold of somebody for something. So it's not really to be used lightly. Now, one of the features of that emergency function, if I turn the radio off and then we turn the radio back on, when we go into the menu and look at that, once this powers up, there we go. If we go to set, DV set, you'll notice emergency is off. So anytime you power the radio off, this always goes back to the off mode. So you have to turn it on every time you power, you know, when you need it, you'd have to turn it on. It doesn't remain on through power cycles. So again, a really nice feature of D-Star, if you've really got to get a hold of somebody and you want anybody within the reception range of your radio to try to help. And that, by the way, is through gateways and reflectors and everything else, as far as I know. Um, anybody within the sound of your voice is going to hear it on their radio, regardless of any kind of squelch or volume settings they have set up. So, kind of a neat function. Let's take a look at how that works. Go ahead and call whenever you're ready. WA2 IV, this is N0 AZ. Yeah, N0 AZ. That uh, definitely broke the squelch and turned the volume control on my radio up to 50%. So I got blasted out by my local speaker as well as what's going into the uh, recording deck here. That's all we're going to cover this time. As you can see, D-Star is really pretty easy to get started with and has some pretty nice features even before you start using all of the internet and gateway functions. Talking through repeaters and gateways is really almost as easy. There are just a few more items that need to be set. There is one key step required in order to use any of the features that go over the internet, and that is that you must register your call sign with the DSTAR network. We'll cover that and more DSTAR settings and features in the next installment. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Please check out the companion website at a2z.tech. There will be a link for that in the description. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and for now, this is Ham Cured Smoke. <laughs>